Hello and welcome to another video. Um, in this video, I want to take a look at 3D printing and specifically with Sculptress Pro. And so I myself print quite often and I have a Form Labs Form 2 printer that I use. And along the way of 3D printing, if you're ever going to get involved in this, there's going to be a process where you need to have the mesh ready for print. So in this case, I have this grill I've sculpted that I'm going to send off to 3D print. Um, you can see when I turn on my poly F or poly frame mode by clicking that button or hitting shift F, you can see that this is ready to go to the printer. So I've decimated this mesh. So this mesh was in, in the millions of polygons and now it's in a, you know, 465,000 active points. So that's just below a million total polygons because this has given us vertex point number. It's not giving us polygon number. So you can see there's various levels of triangles depending on you know where the detailing is. So what will happen when you, you're ready to go 3D print, you might decimate something down and then you notice in a project, hey, you know, I want some of the details to pop a little bit more. And especially for 3D printing, you might need to actually dig a little bit more into the surface or things like maybe I want this part up here to kind of have a little bit better brow maybe down here in the chest or maybe some of these wrinkles. So a great way to do this without having to reverse engineer your piece is just use Sculptures Pro. Okay, so Sculptures Pro is found in the stroke palette. And right here, you'll see that there's a Sculptures Pro section. So this little icon right here turns on Sculptures Pro. So you can see it's the same thing right here. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to switch to the Damien standard brush and I'm going to go a little bit bigger and then I'm going to zoom in in the area here so you guys can see what's going to happen. So what I want to do is maybe make some of these wrinkles pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to be able to do is just scope through here and you can see I can get more detail popping through here and I don't actually have to reverse engineer anything because with Sculptress Pro, ZBrush is dynamically adding triangles as I sculpt. And since we already are triangulated for 3D printing, it's really not that big of a deal. So you can see that is popping a lot more. So maybe if I come up here and I want this brow to even pop a little bit more up here, you can see the difference that we get. And then I can even smooth it back. And I'm using Sculptress Pro to smooth things back. Okay, so now what becomes important is understanding the amount of detailing we're gonna get when we're in this mode. So I'm gonna dock this over here on the right real quick. And the two main settings that I want us to take a look at is of course our subdivide size and our undivide ratio, okay? I also have the adaptive size on, which is on by default, and I have combined on. So the adaptive size is just telling ZBrush, pay attention to my draw size to speculate how many triangles I get. So what I mean by that, we'll turn on poly frame mode here again, and you can see how many triangles I'm getting through here. So when I sculpt through here, you can see the density that I get. Now, if I go with a larger draw size, you'll see that the density is very different. So in essence, that means also the stroke result is going to be very different. And what's controlling that is not only the brush size, but this subdivide size slider right here. So in essence, the lower you put this slider, the more triangles you're gonna get, the higher you put this slider, you know, the larger the triangles are gonna become, okay? So in conjunction with this slider and this button, it's using the draw size and that slider. So I don't tend to change the default setting too much for this. I usually just change my draw size and I'm good to go. Now with that said, when we switch to the shift, which is now the smoothing, okay, that's where this other slider also is going to come in benefit for us. And this other slider is actually a decimating slider. So when we have this combine button on, when we make a stroke, we are actually in ZBrush. We're not only adding tessellating, but at the end of the stroke, 
we're decimating it and getting rid of triangles that aren't really necessary for that stroke. So what I mean by that is this. I'm going to undo that, and I want you to watch my active points up here. And so when I just click and draw through here, you're going to see my active points are going up. So my pen is still on my Cintiq. You can see I'm at 117, I'm sorry, 517,000. Now when I let up my pen, you can see it just dropped to 506. That's 11,000 triangles. That's actually, that's active points, because remember, that's even 22,000 triangles. So what's happening is ZBrush is adding the tessellation, but then it's going back and evaluating and seeing, look, there's a lot of triangles that aren't necessary here, and I'm going to decimate them out and get rid of them. So that's kind of what this slider is helping us control. But another thing that this slider is going to help with is smoothing things out. So if I want to, while I'm holding the shift key, you know, I can change this as well. So let's just change this B up a little bit more. Let's go to two, okay? So when I'm doing this stroke, we're good, and then it's decimating. But now, this is also gonna help us with the smooth brush. So you can see now, smoothing through this surface, my triangles are actually getting large again. And it's because this slider has been turned up so much. So let me undo this. Okay. And let's just put this at 1.5. Okay. And then I'll hold the shift key and you can see the size difference in the triangles and the density. You can see that these triangles are larger than these. And of course, this is more dense than this. So what this opens up for us is even though this print is ready to go, I can still come through and really make things pop on the surface a little bit more and not have to worry about reverse engineering, not having to worry about, hey, can I soften things down and get rid of things? I can come through this model and make some big changes in the detailing and really make things pop more for the purpose of 3D printing. And I, when I'm done with this, I can say we're good to go and then we export for the 3D print. Right? And this is a great way of using Sculptures Pro on a mesh that's already ready to go to our printers. Thank you for watching this video. Continue to watch more videos on the channel and please subscribe.